What is up friends? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Pam and if you're not new here, you're probably wondering where the hell I've been. Sorry. I had to unfortunately get a real job and it sucks my will to exist right out of my body. So things are going great. Anyway, I have a seed haul for you guys today. I've got two different seed companies, one that I order from every year and one that I don't usually order from, but they just got unbeatable prices. So I had to check them out. Um, I've got Pine Tree Garden Seeds as the first one and and my gardener is my second one. So pine tree garden seeds is over here for a sec. So let's set them on fire. Pine tree garden seeds I order from every year. I find that they have a lot of the really cool varieties of cut flowers, especially that um, you know might be on more expensive websites. And they tend to have them at a little bit less cost. I've had really good germination with them so far, and I just I don't know. I get very caught up on their websites. These guys don't have photos on their envelopes, so I will be popping up photos over here so you can check them out. Okay, I did have these sort of sorted out, but this is actually my second time recording this, so they are no longer sorted out. Because somebody might have had lipstick on her pokey outie tooth for the entire video. So we're not wearing lipstick today. Okay, so first up we have the Dahlia Double Extreme. And I also apologize for my grimy fingernails. I did have a very nice manicure the other day when I filmed this the first time. <laughs> so I love uh, planting dahlias from seed. If you aren't new here, you know that. Um, but generally, I'm just, the cost of dahlia tubers is just a little, it's a little more than I'm willing to spend at the moment. So rather than buying a bunch of expensive tubers, I tend to go the more fun way of planting my dahlias by seed. I tend to get like different mixed packets of dahlia seed and then I'll plant them all out. And if I see anything that I really like, you know, I will really take care of that plant. I'll encourage it. I might remove plants that are around it to give it some more space and I'll just really baby that plant. And then I will take the tubers in at the end of winter. And I have successfully done this one time already. Um, not with a super interesting dahlia, but it was just a really good grower and it was very disease and pest resistant. So I was like, I'm just gonna hold on to this tuber. So it's over there in a box. And we're not gonna look at it too hard because I am afraid to scare it. Anyway, I will be planting and looking for some more interesting dahlias out of that seed packet. Great job getting through one packet of seeds so far. I'm so sorry. Okay, so we have some scabiosa. Scabiosa? This is the Imperial Mix. So these are really pretty and I believe that they dry really well and I've just never grown them before. I'm not sure why they're kind of a good filler plant for bouquets and bouquets are going to be a huge focus of my garden this year. Your girl got some dreams. I got some ideas. I don't know if I can pull it off, but um, every day that I stand at my current job that I am in, I think, I mean, I could try. Okay, so also, as always, I am going to have a hearty selection of tea herbs and one that I grew a couple of years ago and didn't get to grow last year because of my seed buying ban is stevia. It is, if you've never popped a stevia leaf in your mouth, it's like hard to, it's hard to think about what it's like to eat a leaf that tastes like sugar. It's, it's very strange, but it is a really cool way to um, sweeten your teas and things like that without adding any sugar and it's it's a little goes a long way so I'm going to throw some more stevia it does need light to germinate which is important so you should always look that up when you're planting and it tends to be like those really tiny seeds that will need light to germinate not a hard and fast rule though yeah. so I've got a little packet here of a hundred borage seeds I'm excited to plant this. I don't know why I never have until now. It's a great bee plant. Next up, we have one for the dye garden. So you'll see me talk about this again in the next video that I'm gonna do when I get my other seeds, but this is indigo. I talked to a guy who works with indigo at a fiber festival last fall, and he said it was really tricky. Um, I don't know if he was trying to warn me or or what, but um, he did, he did he did spook me a little bit, so now um, I definitely need to do some research. I have a lot of stuff to learn about natural dyeing, but I just I want to just dip my toes in the indigo. You know, yeah, just just a little. 
Next up we have broom corn, which I did grow last year and true to my neurodivergent fashion, I got it all the way to grown. I left it on the stalk a little too long and then I dried it improperly because I was being lazy and it was cold and I, again, the work thing. It's just, it's gotta go. Um, so next up we have in cherry tomato and this is called Isis Candy. This is new to me. Um, I told myself that I wasn't going to grow more than one cherry tomato this year, but that was probably a lie. But this is going to be one of them. Um, I just, I think the description sold me, uh, the name sold me. I just, I just need to, I gotta give it a shot. So now we have a hot pepper. I know, shocking for me. And this is just some habaneros. I wanted to get some fresh seed because I know that these are some of the first super hot peppers that I bought seeds for. So they're probably at least two or three years old now. Um, and they're one of my favorites to make hot sauce out of. So absolutely needed to grab some extras of those. And this one I spent a little extra money on because this is like a, it's like a hybrid that for some reason is always just a lot more money. It's probably like a patent thing or something, but this is the Carmen OG sweet pepper. I picked this one up because it is in just about every farmer's market that is existing around here. So I am assuming based on that information that it might grow well around here. So I'm going to give it a shot. I've also never even eaten one. I don't know why I didn't just grab one the million times that I saw them, but for some reason I was just like, I'm going to grow it. And then one time I even bought a little baby seedling of it and um, I didn't plant it in time and it, it died. Better luck this time. <laughs> I've got some winter density lettuce. And obviously this one by the name um, is a good winter lettuce. So this will be one of the first lettuces that I will be planting. I'll be doing that kind of soon. I'm gonna see if I can get some to grow under like double cover out in the high tunnel, maybe. But we are actually entering like the super cold part of winter for us here. I'm in Southern Massachusetts on the coast and usually our like super cold time is mid-January to like March, April, and then spring just like shows up and it's there for like two weeks and then it's gone. So it's a little stressful to plan things. Another one of my favorite lettuce to have on hand is the Marvel of Four Seasons. You can see it's got the, uh, the French pronunciation, which I am not going to embarrass myself by attempting because I haven't logged on to Duolingo in a year and I never will again. Now this is another one that I see frequently at the farmer's market and so far this little method of choosing varieties has worked really well for me so I, I highly recommend even if you grow like all of your vegetables and you don't need to go to the farmer's market it might just be worth peeking around to see what kind of varieties they have because a lot of times it's a good indication of what will grow relatively well near you. Some stuff they will be growing under like a high tunnel that you may not have. So that's just something to keep in mind, but you know, yada, yada. I have some mokum carrots and these always look really nice on the farm stand and my carrot seeds are definitely getting a little bit crusty. So it's time to get some new ones. Okay. Next up we have the Patterson onion. This is one that's going in very soon because it is onion starting time for me. Um, these say eight to 10 weeks before the last frost. In my experience, starting them earlier is a good idea. I don't like to mess with their roots too much. That didn't do me very well last year. So um, I'm not really sure how I'm gonna start them yet this year because I don't wanna use full soil blocks. That's gonna be too much space. I want lots of onions. So probably gonna get a plug tray and do them that way. But yeah, we gotta get going. So this is 104 days to harvest. And if you didn't know, if you've never grown onions before, there are different kinds of onions. So in my area in New England, we need long day onions. So that's a long day onion. They're supposed to be very good for storage. Unfortunately, I have to lock this one in a separate room from his best friend since he got here, since he was a baby, because he decided to savagely attack him yesterday. <laughs> oh, we're making bed appointments. We're crying a lot. It's. It's terrible. <laughs> if you're not new here, you know how much my cats love each other. So this is like devastating. We have to like reintroduce them like they're brand new cats. <laughs> ah. Next up we have Zinnia. 
This is Oklahoma Salmon. I'm such a sucker for salmon colors and I'm just never gonna get over it. So that's one of those. I'm actually kind of out of zinnia seeds. So this year was like, I gotta restock on everything. This is another zinnia and this is Queenie Lime Orange. I think these used to be called Queen Lime Orange. I'm not sure why they added the Y, but there you go. Now with added Y. It doesn't even look like there are seeds in here. A whole 20 of them. Make sure that you pay attention to how many seeds are in these packets because uh, sometimes pine trees seed count is a little. Mm. So here's another one for the dye garden. This is some amaranth. And that is the Hopi red dye. Um, so this makes a red dye, obviously. <laughs> I've never grown that one before. I have mixed success with amaranth. It either grows beautifully and majestically or not at all. Um, this one is for the tea garden. I'm very excited about this one. Uh, this advises to soak these seeds overnight to aid germination. And this is a 90 to 120 day harvest. So I'm probably gonna start this one eight weeks before my last frost. This is hibiscus roselle and you're gonna use the little calyxes to make your tea with. So I'm excited about this one. I've never grown it before, so hopefully I can. <laughs> this one I have grown before, and these are just, they don't even look real. They're so beautiful. This is the cup and saucers mix of Cosmos. They're so pretty. They look like little cupcake liners, like on a saucer just unbelievably romantic and I cannot wait to put them in some unbelievably romantic bouquets like the unbelievably romantic bitch that I am. Here is some status. This is a rose light. I thought the color was really beautiful so I had to give it a had to give it a go. I grew my first status last year and I was like, oh, I'm just never not gonna be without these. It's just too perfect in bouquets. It dries beautifully. It's just such a cool flower. Next up, we have another cool little filler flower that I've never grown before. This is Gomfrina or Globe Amaranth. So if you have a long growing season, you can direct sow these after the last frost. Um, I'm gonna need to start mine six to eight weeks ahead of time. And this one is a huge favorite. This is actually one of the reasons why I, I end up placing an order with Pine Tree Garden seeds every year because I need to get more of these. Um, this is the Honey Bee Viola. These are so freaking cute and I hopefully will have my own picture up here of them because I've grown them a bunch of times and they're just, they smell delightful. They're so cute and cheerful and I just love them so much. Okay, last up we have a beautifully colored nasturtium. This is the Empress of India. I've never grown this variety before, but I grow nasturtium every year. I love them. They're supposed to be like good pest resistant or whatever. I have never noticed that to be a thing, but what they are is bumblebee bait. Bumblebees love these and I love bumblebees. So. And next up we have the MI Gardener seeds. So this is a seed company I don't usually order from. Um, kind of like loyal to maybe like four or five seed companies that I really like to order from, but you know, you just can't argue with $2 seeds. So I figured I would take the list of seeds I was already looking for and see if they carried them and I would just grab them from them. All right, so first up, we've got a couple of onions here. Two, three, we have three packs of onions. So I got most of my onions from here and these, again, I've got to get these going after I get this video done. So these are the Red Long of Tropia. And these are really good. These didn't get too big for me last year, but none of my onions got big last year. So I think it was either a weather thing because I know a lot of people that had the same issue or I just, I, I damaged their roots too much when I transplanted them, which is entirely possible because I used the prick out method last year. Who knows? I don't know. I also didn't really trim my onions last year. So now I don't know which with which thing made it better or worse. So we'll, we'll figure it out this year but this is the red long of Tropia and they are quite tasty. The next one, um, this one I got sold on just like description said it was a long storing onion, which is something I need. So this is the Ailsa Craig onion. And thankfully they put pictures on these seed packets. Although unfortunately you will have to look at my grimy fingernails. I apologize. 
Next up we have the Walla Walla onion and this is a kind of a staple as far as onions go around here like you can usually find these in farmers markets and stuff. So I thought I'd give that one another go. Those grew pretty well for me my first year growing onions. This next one is another attempt at growing eggplants before the flea beetles destroy the plant. We'll see if it works. It probably won't. I'm going to try and grow them undercover. It probably won't help. I don't know. Eggplants are exhausting, but this is the little finger eggplant and I think they're pretty cute. They're just like little guys. So I figure if maybe they don't need to be on the plant as long, maybe I can actually get some off of it. And if not, no big deal. I'll just buy them from the local farmer's market. I'm trying to get it through my head that it is probably the same price when you consider fertilizer, water, time spent, you know, coaxing plants that don't really want to grow here when I could just go and get them from the local farm stand and I will grow what grows good here. We're in a period of acceptance here in my 40s. So this is Bells of Ireland. This will be my 947th attempt at growing Bells of Ireland. Wish me luck. I have tried winter sowing it. Um, actually, I did grow seedlings of it last year, um, but unfortunately the seedlings were in a winter sowing container that I forgot to take outside and they sprouted indoors and it was way too early. And then they died. So we're gonna try again. This is Silver Queen corn. I am basically growing this for my son because he likes it. So Silver Queen corn he shall have, maybe if the bugs let me have it. <laughs> Let's see. We have crazy corn worms here. They are terrible. Okay, we've got some cheery little apple blossom uh, snapdragons, which I just want to call apple bottom for some reason because I'm a millennial. Snapdragons are one that I have almost used all of my seeds. I had a whole bunch of seeds and then they lasted me about two, three years and now I'm going to have to restock a little bit. So this is straw flower, silvery rose. And these just have little drawings on them. So hopefully I'll be able to show you some photos as well. Straw flowers I love because they dry so well. On top of working on a lot of bouquets this year, I also want to start working with dried flowers and pressed flowers and just like making botanical art. Um, you know, I want to like make things, beautiful things. I've got these cute little carnations right here. I have successfully started some carnations that are perennial here, hopefully, even after our Arctic blast this week. Carnations remind me of St. Patrick's Day in Catholic school. They would always come around with this little sheet, and if you had money, you could buy carnations for like your parents or your friends or whatever. And I, I, I remember getting them a few times, but I remember like there would always be, you know, the popular girls in class would get like whole bouquets of them. I think people would send them to them. I, so I, carnations, there's a little trauma in there with carnations. <laughs> Next up we have the American flag leek. I love leeks. I love leeks. I am a leek freak. So I will grow them every year of my life until I die because I love them. And we've got a new tomato to me. This is the Marglobe tomato. Um, I've heard good things about these growing around here, so I wanted to give those a shot while I had access to, you know, $2 tomato seeds. And this one is actually the thing that had me start an order at MI Gardener because I haven't been able to find this particular variety of ground cherry anywhere. This is the pineapple tomatillo. So these are these are delicious. So this is the first variety of ground cherry that I ever grew and when I got another packet of them, I think I got like the Aunt Molly's kind or whatever, they grew the next year and I was like, why are these not as good? Like they were fine, but they weren't, they were like a really sweet tomato. They weren't like a ground cherry. They didn't taste like a fruit. These. These are where it's at. And then MI Gardener is one of those companies uh, that just throw in a free pack of seeds, which is great. You don't always get that with like some of the 
little smaller places. Um, so this is a salad bowl mix, which is which is lovely because a lot of the lettuce I tend to buy is like head lettuce and stuff like that. I don't usually get the cotton come again varieties, which I need to like remember to do that. Okay, so that's it. That is the seed orders so far this year. Like I said, I have one more coming in, so that'll probably be the next video. And we'll talk about like dye gardens, what colors you can get out of what plants and like, uh, you know, a real quick summary of how that happens. And I will show you the seeds that I picked out. <laughs> All right, so that is all I got for you guys today. It was great to be back hanging out with you and I promise it won't be so long the next time around. I am slowly getting my, my mojo back and um, we're hoping to remedy the job situation as soon as possible. Hopefully with another one that I can stand a little bit more, maybe from home. Oh, I'd sure love a remote job if anybody's got the hookup. All right, say bye. Say bye. I want to go pretend like I don't know my brother of three years now. Okay, bye. You're not allowed to go out there. You are unwell. You have anger issues.